Welcome back to On of Football. Today's review is going to be on the Nike Vapor Speeds that are new for this year. You saw the unboxing a couple weeks ago, so in this review, we're going to take a closer look at what this cleat is and go into the detail, cover off on things on like the weight, the breathability, the traction, the comfort, and different things like that. So without further ado, let's get into the review. This is Nike's mid-tier cleat. Of course, Nike came out with the Vapor Carbon Elite 2014s earlier this year. I've already reviewed those, so take a look. Uh, but these are Nike's mid-tier cleat. They fall in the $100 price range. They're $99 from a variety of places. They're still a vapor cleat, which means that it's a speed cleat, right? If you look at the tongue right here, it has the vapor and it says speed because they're the vapor speeds. But any vapor cleat from Nike is going to be all for speed players, for skill players. Um, but this cleat does not have any fly wire, which is going to affect your lockdown. Um, it's a little bit heavier. It's also uh, has a different traction plate from the past, so it does have a 2014 Vapor traction plate, but this traction plate is still different than the Vapor Carbon Elite, so we'll get into some of those differences as well. There's no carbon fiber in the bottom of the plate, so that's going to affect some of the rebound and cushioning as well, even though this is a, a well-cushioned cleat. And then the sizing is just different, so these more fit true to size where I think the Vapor Carbon Elites actually run a little bit big. So that's kind of the general overview. You can see the design of it, it comes in a variety of colors, uh, but now we can start getting into some of the specifics. So the first thing I want to talk about is just the traction. This is a new traction plate, all right? So, um, you know, you don't have studs here. Uh, these are very thin blades that they have, and there's actually four of them. So you really get that traction um, as in that forefoot. Um, if you look at the towards the bottom of the forefoot you've got blades here and tiny studs that are incorporated and at the back you've got the same thing kind of studs they're small and then you've got blades that are incorporated into it so that's going to differ a little bit than the vapor carbon 2014 traction plate so you can see here you still got the blades but you can see how the blades are oriented differently and you've still got the four in the middle um, but you can see here where it starts to differ and then at the bottom it starts to differ as well so I rated these very high the, the vapor carbons very high in terms of traction these were high as well but they just weren't as high uh, they actually got an 8.5 out of 10 um, and a lot of that has to do with some other factors in terms of lockdown and things like that because that's all going to affect how the traction feels so without fly wire they just didn't have that lockdown of the fit and overall traction I gave an 8.5. Now cleats these days are getting lighter and lighter and lighter. The added zeros are really light. The UA blurs are really light. The carbons are light. Uh, this is actually one of the heavier cleats, um, especially in a low top form. Uh, so I did give these a 7.5 out of 10. Um, you know, I don't really think weight has that big of an effect. I'm not really a believer in all the, the weight battles between the cleats. I'd rather have a solidly built cleat, but if you are one of those guys that, hey, weight is a factor for you, this is actually going to be one of the heavier cleats on the market. Um, therefore, that's why I received that 7.5 out of 10. Fitment is going to be a key issue. Fitment uh, affects everything from the traction, your stability, how comfortable you feel, everything like that. Uh, these fit true to size, as I said before. Um, there's not a lot of heel lockdown for me in terms of uh, you know, having the laces pull your foot back into the, the um, heel counter of the shoe. And I do have thin ankles, so that may be a factor. If you have really thick ankles, that may not be a problem for you. But there's some other cleats that do it better. Um, but it, it does have zero space. Um, so, you know, that means that your foot is not going to be slipping inside. I would have liked an extra eyelet right here to really lock my foot in back into the heel counter. Uh, for that reason, I gave these an 8 out of 10. Talking about the ventilation and breathability in this shoe, uh, they are made from a synthetic material, but I didn't see any and I didn't feel any ways that air got out. The main thing that's breathable on the shoe is going to be the tongue. The tongue is super light. It's got the holes, so that's where all your uh, breathability and your airflow is going to come from in the shoe. If you wear uh, ankle braces, you know that's going to affect some of it as well. Uh, but overall, I didn't think they breathed that well, and I gave these a 7 out of 10. So as I said before, this is a vapor cleat, and vapor cleats are all about speed. If you're in Nike's line, and you know they've got the vapors, they've got the alphas, uh, vapors have traditionally been for just speed players. You know, if you're a, um, a heavier linebacker or middle linebacker, um, you know, or on the line, you don't want to use a, a speed cleat um, or especially a vapor cleat. Um, you'd use something more like the alphas, but this has uh, sufficient cushioning that I felt um, it was really a solidly built shoe. 
Um, so if you're not one of those, uh, you know, people who fit into the vapor cleats or really want to speed cleat, this is comparable to the Alpha Pro TDs in terms of cushioning. So there's no fly wire. So I think that the Alpha Pros are still going to give you a better lockdown. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but this is a solidly cushioned shoe. And for overall cushioning, I gave it a 9 out of 10. Very similarly, this cleat got a high rating in durability. It's a solid cleat. I mean, this is going to be like your all-around cleat. It's going to last you a full season practice and games. Um, it's just one of those solidly built cleats. You're not going to see a lot of creases in it because of the material. The only thing that I saw was scuffing. And I did only use these on turf. I haven't used these in grass. And I haven't tried to clean them off yet. Uh, but anytime you have a white material like this, uh, it's going to be difficult to keep white. So that's the only watch out for you. Um, uh, you can try to use in Goo Gone, the same thing that I used on the helmet cleaning video uh, to get some of this off and to clean it. Um, and that's what I'll do after this. It, it does work a little, uh, but you're never going to get it crisp white. Uh, so durability did get a 9 out of 10 just because it is going to last you. The cushioning is not going to go out. It's not going to overly crease. And it's still going to be a good looking cleat for you and for the rest of your season. This cleat is $99. You can get it from Nike. You can get it from a lot of various uh, sports places. Look online. I saw a few colors uh, with a black base, uh, white on the toe, blue on the toe, red on the toe, black on the toe. And then they had uh, a white base with some other colors. So go ahead, check it out. If you like my review, remember to give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.